Hey you guys, this is Tom from Tom's Interesting Talk and we're back at it. We're taking a look at our new, or new-ish now, 5 gallon guppy breeding tank. Of course it's been about another month since we worked on it last and you can see that the algae on the side of the tank is built up quite significantly again and this is a dirty 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 tank. The grass has been doing really really well in here as you can tell it's just bounds of it in here. So we're going to go through the tank today and we're going to address some of the algae buildup on the filters and the, on the glass on the inside. And then we're also going to go through this thing and kind of help control the algae that's building up on the top of the sand. Like I said in my last video, this algae is just a continuous process. There's nothing you can really do about it. Or any kind of water that you're going to put in this tank is going to have some sort of culture of algae in it. Um, and that's just part of the game. It's a sign of a very healthy, good tank. It's a sign that you have enough nitrates in, in your water to grow plants. And it's a nice sign that the biological system is working correctly in this thing. Remember, this is a father fish inspired soil and sand five gallon guppy breeding tank with three inches of 3.0 build a soil soil in it and about three to four inches of just a nice pool filter sand. And so far, so good. It's been doing really good. I tell you, the biological system in this thing I think is working perfectly. I continue to test it. You know, I've tested it a couple times within the last month just to make sure everything is working like it's supposed to you know no ammonia buildups no nitrite buildups or nitrate buildups well nitrates are good so I'm not real worried about nitrate buildups but the ammonia and the nitrites are the two boogers that you need to worry about remember ammonia is that silent killer it will just kill your fish quick and in a hurry, so you need to be constantly paying attention to ammonia strike spikes in your water. And then nitrates, and then nitrites are those dirty, dirty dogs that could potentially suffocate your fish in a fish tank that has plenty of oxygen. Remember, nitrites block the hemoglobin in the blood and slowly suffocate your fish so this is why we need to be testing our water and making sure that our biological system is working correctly. Like I said, the only way to control algae is due diligence. It's, you just got to work on it. You got to scrape it off the sides of the tank. You got to brush it out of there. You got to try to mechanically pull it out, you know, by doing water changes and things like that. Or you have a real strong filtration system like I do with the two sponge filters and it builds up then on the sponge filters and collects all the little particles and becomes the steward of that algae so to speak as it collects all the little pieces floating around in the water and then what you're able to do is pull that sponge out of there and then clean it pull all the algae off of it and then put it back we're also going to go along here and try to deal with the algae that's been built up on the bottom of the sand. And then, all, so all I'm going to do for that is, so like you've heard Father Fish talk about, and I'm sure other fish hobbyists talk about, um, you know, a lot of the time algae is built up by nitri nitrates, excess nitrates in the water, um, and then excess sun. This little tank does tend to sit by my back door, which has all day sun. So even though I'm leaving the light off until say three o'clock in the afternoon, it's still been getting sun from the back door. And there's just not much I can do about that. So a couple different things you can do is you can add a little layer of, an extra little layer of sand in here to help cover up that algae and potentially kill it. Which in turn adds nutrients to that sand, you know, and begins that biological process of that algae breaking down and then turning into food for bacteria and da, da 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 yada 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 so you can add a couple inches of sand or not a couple inches i'm sorry just a small layer of sand maybe a quarter to a half inch over that algae to see if you can kill it that way by locking out the sun or what i'm going to do in this video is i'm just basically going to sink it 
I'm gonna just tap it down into the sand and then whatever's left on the top of the sand I'm gonna run a little vacuum and see if I can collect those particles and then let the bunch filters do their job after the fact and then probably in a day or two you know I'll pull those sponge filters out again and brush the outsides. I won't spray them out or do any of that kind of stuff. I'll just brush the outside and then get as much of that, those small particles of algae out as possible. I know you can see this guys and I'm super excited. We have baby, baby guppies. So remember the two female guppies that I had put in the tank initially? Well, one of those baby or one of those mama guppies has had birth. So we are parents of about 17 or 18 little tiny baby guppies. So cute, so, so cute as they run around and explore their new environment and check things out and find things to eat and see what's going on. I do have one very unfortunate thing to port the mother guppy that had all these babies. Fortunately, she died in birth. So as she was given birth to these baby guppies, it was just too much for her. So she had her 17 or 18 babies and unfortunately perished. We'll miss her. But like guppies do, she was able to continue on the species and she has 17 or 18 beautiful little babies that are going to carry on her name. Oh, like I was telling you in my last video, that I have a 155 gallon fish tank that I'm trying to basically have a whole shool of fish. I want to have 30, 40, 50 guppies in there and just big shools of guppies. And then I think I'm going to do another big uh, shool of neon tetras in there as well. So we're going to have guppies and neon tetras and just run full color spectrum of just gorgeous fish. I'm also going to have some cardinal, cardinal tetras in there as well. I honestly think the cardinal tetras are prettier than the neon tetras. But we want a whole shool, two shools of amazing color moving around in that 155 gallon to make, to make it a spectacle. And I can't wait to have that. And then what I'll do is I'll do some live feeding videos where these shools move around and eat. And you'll see. It is quite the spectacle, just beautiful to behold. Just like any little tank, you guys, you know, there's adjustments. You gotta be nipping things. You gotta be, you know, it's, it's like taking care of plants. You know, you're constantly having to trim off a, a leaf or two, or you have dying leaves falling to the, you know, falling to the ground and that you have to pick up and you're just constantly maintaining little this is and that's. I mean, you gotta remember, it's been a month since I've cleaned. So this is month four with this little five gallon guppy breeding tank. Maybe first week into month four. And I think the biological system's working really, really good. The grass is growing good. I think the soil, the grass roots are able to grow down into that soil and it's just making this grass absolutely explode. And everything is running really, really well in this little tank. And I'm super, super happy. To report that I've had no deaths since my mother, the little guppy mother died, and all these little baby guppies are doing just amazing. And as you can see, this little tank has just been a great addition to, you know, my natural little sitting area that I talked about in another video of mine. And I just, I, every day, I'm just fascinated by these little tiny fish breeding and growing in this little tiny tank, this little live biological ecosystem that we've created with just air and light. I mean, I'm running air through those sponge filters and I'm running light. It is a very simple process. That's it. We're cleaning the water in that tank with those sponges and we're helping those plants grow with that light. And that's all there is to it, you guys two sponge filters, a pump, and a light. That's all you need to run a beautiful little tank like this. You know, you don't need the big canister filters. You don't need hang-off-the-back filters. You don't need any of that kind of stuff. 
to run a small little tank like this. Air, sponge, and light. Sand and soil in a glass tank. And you know, the tank cleaned up really good, took a little of that algae off the front glass there, and everything's running just fine. Now you gotta remember, with a soil sand tank like this, natural biology, you're not gonna get those perfect, crisp, absolute, gorgeous, stunning, perfectly clean glass kind of look. I mean, it's gonna be a little cloudy. It's gonna have things floating in the water. You know, you're, that's part of that natural process. But if you stand back just a little bit, you'll see that that water is clean, crisp, and clear and the way it should be running these natural systems. There is such a thing as cleaning your tank too much. You can definitely clean your tank too much and then you're mechanically doing the biology yourself with the charcoal, you know, biologically activated cubes and, you know, mechanically changing out your water you know consistently is you know once or twice a week or once a week you know depending on how how much that biological system requires you changing that water and how well your mechanical systems are working by biologically to help keep the bacteria process at bay or the nitrogen cycle at bay so these are really good easy simple systems you guys i just i can't say it enough there is no need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on stuff that you just don't need to spend stuff on, not that much money on. It just it it doesn't need to be part of the process. Fish keeping should be simple and easy. It should be like maintaining a plant. You know, you you water it. You know, you nip a few leaves off of it. You add a little fertilizer from time to time. You know, you let your soil do the work, and that's it simple easy fish tank that is beautiful to look at hey you guys thanks for watching thanks for listening to me and spending some time with me as always i appreciate each and every one of you for listening hopefully this was a little informing and hopefully you enjoy the rest of your day thanks again please like and subscribe you know that's what makes it all go around i forgot 100 subscribers i have reached it let's head for a goal of 200 subscribers please like and subscribe let's get to that 200 mark thank you